Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another video on the DC Foot Doctor channel. Be sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and ring the bell for notifications. Follow me on social media at DC Foot Doctor. In this video, I will be going a little deeper into fungal infections of the toenails and the skin of the feet. Who is more likely to get it, how it occurs, and what can be done to get rid of it. First, everyone is susceptible to a fungal infection of their feet and other parts of the body for that matter. No one is immune. Matter of fact, probably most adults have had some form of fungal infection sometime in their life, whether it be ringworm on their face as a kid or some kind of strange skin change. They weren't sure what it is. Maybe they thought it was a little rash or something that went away after a few weeks. That may have been a fungal infection. I have seen homeless people living on the street with no fungal infection. Now I have seen professionals, doctors, lawyers, teachers, police officers, you name it, come in with whopping infections of their feet and of their toenails. So there really is no profile of who can get a fungal infection. Though we start to see it in teenage years, I have seen it in younger children, all the way up to people in their hundreds. Usually the first question a patient asks me when they come in with these issues is, how did they get it? They say they bathe every day, they wear nice shoes, uh, their home is clean, everybody else in the house is clean, they don't share socks and shoes with anyone, so they really don't understand how they were able to contract a fungal infection of their feet. So the first thing to understand is that fungus is everywhere. It is in the environment, it's in every home, it's in every store. It's in every athletic facility. Anywhere we go, we will find fungus. Fungus will find us. Fungus is also part of our body, it's in our skin. It's also in our orifices, like uh, the mouth and nose. And that's what we call normal flora. Normal flora are those microorganisms that live in our skin and inside of our body that usually do not cause any problems. They may be even beneficial, such as bacteria inside of our intestines. However, things can change so that these normal microorganisms become problematic. For instance, if you get a scrape or a cut in your skin, the bacteria that's normally found on the surface of the skin can get under the skin and cause an infection. The same goes for fungal infections. Small changes can allow the fungus to take root and then to overwhelm the rest of the organisms in the skin and become an infection. Fungi are closely related to molds and yeast, and like those organisms, they thrive in dark, moist, warm environments. Excessive moisture of the feet can come from sweating, not completely drying the feet after bathing or swimming, wearing shoes with poor air exchange, and working in wet environments such as restaurant kitchens, food processing plants, and swimming pools, to name a few. Our shoes further create the perfect environment for fungal infections because they are dark when our feet are inside them. They are warmer because of the temperature of the feet. And the skin and nails also are excellent food source for fungal organisms. People with compromised immune systems such as those undergoing chemotherapy for cancer or those with advanced HIV disease are more likely to develop fungal infections of the feet and other parts of the body. Another question I'm often asked by patients who are dealing with fungal infections is how does such a small organism cause the changes that we see in the skin and the toenails? As the organisms thrive and begin to multiply, they cause the outer layer of the skin, the epidermis, to separate from the lower layers, causing peeling. We call that process desquamation. We also see desquamation, or peeling of the skin, 
and other conditions such as eczema and sunburns. This patient has athlete's foot, also known as tinea pettis. This is a fungal infection of the skin, primarily the bottom of the feet and between the toes. I will go more into that in part two of his case. Fungal infections of the toenails and the fingernails is called onychomycosis. Onycho is from the Greek for nail and mycosis meaning fungal infection. Color changes can include whitish or chalky, yellow, brown, or even black in the case of some mold infection. If the infection goes on long enough, the nails can become thick and hard or brittle and crumbly depending on the organism. As time goes on, there can be a thick buildup of skin and fungal organisms under the nail. This causes the nails to loosen and allows the infection to move further underneath the nail toward the base of the nail. As a result of this thickening, hardening, and loosening of the nail, many patients complain of pain, especially when wearing shoes. Jagged edges from this abnormal growth can cause ingrown toenails. These abnormal changes in the toenails are called onychodystrophy. In folks who are unable to care for their own feet or have not had anyone take care of them for them, this can lead to the very long, very thick, very malformed nail known as the ram's horn toenail, medically known as onychogryphosis. Medical treatment of fungal toenail infection includes topical medications that are applied directly to the toenail, oral medications that are taken by mouth, or even laser therapy. What the doctor chooses depends on the patient's underlying health conditions, if any, other medications the patient may be taking, age, the number of toenails involved, and how much discomfort the patient may be in. Unfortunately, what the patient's health insurance may cover or what the patient is able to pay out of pocket for is also playing a growing role in what our choices are for treatment. Before I start a patient on any type of therapy, I send samples of their toenails to the lab to one, confirm the presence of fungus, and two, to identify the exact species that's causing the infection. Medication alone will not solve this problem. The patient has a role to play as well. The patient must maintain a dry environment of their feet by using foot sprays or powders. The patient must disinfect their shoes daily after wearing them. And the patient must alternate shoes daily. Don't wear the same shoes all the time. Stay tuned for part two of this case as we go through this patient's issue with dry skin, calluses, and athlete's foot. This is Kevin Jefferson, the DC Foot Doctor. Thank you for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up. To see very interesting cases and my approach and techniques to dealing with them and to learn how you can improve your foot health, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a new video has been uploaded. Follow me on social media at DC Foot Doctor. Most importantly, take care of your feet.